Hi, welcome to VNN. I'm Jeremy, and this is Cecilia. Hi! Uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> stories for you today. Starting with, The Elegant Chef has finally reopened its doors! The Elegant Chef has recently announced it's back open to the general public. It will be open between Tuesdays and Thursdays. The Elegant Chef is run by the culinary students and their chef instructors, Jimmy Bergen, Carly Capero, and Paul Wilson. Sorry if I butchered your names. At the Neshoba Tech. It has been closed since the second half of the 2019-2020 school year until now. Until the reopening, they have been serving lunches to staff that have been in the building. Although we have been in the building since day one of the school year, the restaurant has not reopened in a position, but instead has been offering meals for pickup. Due to COVID, there has been a few changes as well as adhering to whatever rules the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education has in place. They will be adhering to social distancing as well as there will be no more buffet fr buffets on Friday happening. And something new that they are offering, offering is catering, including lasagna, chicken wings, pulled pork, meatballs, and more for large gatherings. Those interested in coming in for lunch can call the restaurant at 978 692-9958 to make sure it's open and to make a reservation. If you are interested in visiting, you can find it on the back side of the school across from the track. Mm, I wish I could go there and eat. Me too. Our next package is the mentor program. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vanessa. I'm a junior in TV media. The mentor program is a program where juniors can help the freshmen as they transition into high school in a new, completely different school environment. So through the summer and into their freshman year, we help them and we answer all their questions we have. We give them tours through the school when they need it. It's, uh, it's really great for the freshmen to have friends who are juniors and upperclassmen who know what they're doing in the school and have more information about like the teachers, the staff, um, and like the, to know their way around the school. Hi, my name is Jenna. I am a junior in culinary, and I joined the mentor program because when I first came to Neshoba Tech, I had transferred from out of state, and the mentors really helped me out my freshman year with getting accustomed to high school, especially since it's a technical school, and it's a lot different than just going to a regular school. So I wanted to be able to do the same, and I wanted to help the freshmen out that were coming into the school. Hi, I'm Alexis. I'm a freshman at Neshoba Tech. My mentor was Jenna. She was a great mentor. She helped me a lot. She answered my questions. It made me feel very welcomed as a freshman. During orientation, we bonded a lot. We had pizza. Hi, my name is Dylan Shank, and I was a mentor to seven awesome students. I had the pleasure of showing them around and helping them in this new school environment, and it was honestly such a fun experience that I had to do and it was just super fun and I'm really happy I got to help these new students feel welcome in the school. Hi, I'm Kane Trail. Um, I'm a student at Neshoba Tech and my mentor was Dylan and he really helped me out during the summer coming into high school. I was having a lot of anxiety about everything and he gives great advice. Coming into high school, he gave me tours and he helped me get to my classes, so it was really helpful. Hi, my name's Lily. I'm a mentor and health assistant and I joined the mentor program because I really wanted to help the freshmen get comfortable in high school. Um, and during the summer, I answered all of their questions and I still am in contact with them. I think that the mentor program is really helpful and is a really good program at Neshoba Tech. Mary Silk, a six-year maths and special education instructor, has been named December's Employee of the Month. She was nominated by English instructor, instructor Don Phillips, who wrote, 
No matter what time of day I arrive or depart from the school, Mary is here working. She does outstanding work with the special education department and her liaison caseload. Now we're on to sports with Connor McCall. Thank you, Jeremy. I'm Connor McCall, everybody, and welcome to the sports. Now we have the Patriots up first. Sadly, they lost their game 17 to 47 against the Buffalo Bills. Hopefully they can come back next year and get a nice playoff run. Now we got the Bruins. Sadly, it's another loss. They lost four to three in overtime against the Avalanche. I know these names are uh, pretty interesting. And then they face off against the Coyotes. Another interesting one. Now the Celtics though, they have not disappointed. 53-point win against the Kings. Hopefully when they face the Hawks, they can keep the momentum going and get a nice win streak. Now, let's cut to our hockey package. Inca Group, the owners of the IKEA furniture chain, just bought 3,200 acres of forest in Florida that have been destroyed by a hurricane in order to restore it with longleaf pine. Part of the retail's giant commitment to carbon ne neutrality, Inca Group has gradually accumulated more than 600 million forested acres in the U.S., Europe, and New Zealand to offset the CO2 release during its entire value chain. The new forest will support increased biodiversity, help ensure sustainable timber production from responsibly managed forests, and recover land damage by the Hurricane Michael in, or in October 2018, Inca Group stated. If Inca can keep forests healthy and alive in 40 years, they will pull carbon out of the air equal to a certain percentage of the carbon placed into the atmosphere by IKEA's operations while providing valuable habitat for the vulnerable species like the gopher tortoise, pine snakes, and dusky gopher frogs. Now, it's time for the weather. Nope, time for a PSA. If you're buzzed and doing this, To make yourself feel okay to drive? ZWX. Uh, You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you. As a scientist, I know by the time she takes her first breath, nine billion more tons of carbon pollution will be in the air. When she takes her first steps, wildfires will have burned millions more acres she could have explored. By the time a child born today goes to college, it may be too late to leave them the world we promised. Our window to act on climate change is like watching them grow up. We blink and we miss it. Put a frog in a pot of boiling water and it'll jump right out. But put a frog in a pot of cool water and slowly heat it up, and that frog will boil. As veterans, we can tell ourselves the lie that it's easier to stay in that boiling water, to disconnect. But you've never been interested in easy. You are not a frog. Find resources at va.gov reach. 
I am so glad you ladies are here. You each have your own rooms. Thank you. <laughs> Is it okay to call you mom? Of course you can. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Those were some nice PSAs. They definitely made me teary-eyed. Now, it's time for the weather. Guys, I'm Adley Phillips here. <laughs> what? here with the weather. That's a lot of L's. So here we are, the Friday weather, partly cloudy, 39 degrees at its highs and 33 at its low. Saturday is again partly cloudy, 17 as its high and 6 as its low. Sunday, partly cloudy again, 28 as its high and 1 as its low and snow on Monday, and 43 degrees and 19 is its low. Tuesday is again partly cloudy and 29 degrees, with 15 as its low. On to the paper airplane package. Hi, I'm Nick Fisher, and if you're like me, you've watched movies set in high schools and wondered, how do they make those dang airplanes? Well, today I'm gonna show you. Today, I'm going to show you a simple, multi-step process on how to make a classic paper airplane. Now, obvious first step, you gotta grab a piece of paper. We have plenty, I'll show you multiple examples today. Next, obviously, to start it off with your paper, you gotta get some writing on there, you know? That's, how, that's a sign of a good paper airplane some nice writing. I got a side camera here to show a display. Now, what you write, it's entirely up to you. Uh, I'm gonna write the name of my elementary school teacher. Hi, Mrs. Jepson. Now, your next steps with your, with your uh, airplane paper you wanna make sure that this thing, it's sturdy. So you gotta take a hammer to it. I shouldn't use this hammer on a table. Uh, you gotta take a hammer to, oh, are you okay? I'm sorry. You gotta take a hammer to it and just. All right, very important. You gotta make sure that thing is nice and sturdy. It's gonna hold up, all right? When it's flying, this thing has gotta last, okay? All right, all right, all right, now. For aerodynamics, it is very important. That you get some holes in that plane, all right? So you need at least two-sided hole punch. You know, some people, some people, they really like that light flight, light flight on their paper. And so you gotta get multiple sides going, all right? Some people, you know, you gotta get real fancy with it sometimes. You even got it. Your first fold of your paper is folding it in half to hole punch it more. Get, get, that, no. Get, hole, hole punch. This hole puncher hates me. It's not working. There, hole punched. Now obviously these holes, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble. It's gonna be a little windy in there. You gotta give it windows. Windows on your plane, very, very important. Gotta make those windows wider. These are deluxe seating in your airplane. You gotta make them good, good windows. You wanna get those nice views. That That 
here's what modern airplanes are lacking. Large windows, cut with scissors specifically. Oh, I, I broke the airplane. It's fine. You know, good airplanes, they're a little rough on the edges. That's all right, this one isn't, this one is perfect. But a good airplane, it's a little rough, it's a little rough. That's okay, that's okay. It's okay that it's rough. Airplanes are meant to be rough, okay? Now ring your bell. Now obviously, it's a messy process. You gotta keep those hands, you gotta keep them nice and, uh, nice and clean, all right? Next, your airplane. You wanna take it, you wanna take it. You gotta make sure it's the right length, you know? Airplane should be approximately, how long is that? Megan, how long is that? Eight feet. Eight feet. What? what? No. It, however long this is, that's how long your airplane should be. Uh, why is there a lobster here? No, get, no. You wanna make sure there's a frog in your plane. It's very important. But what, what is in the frog? What, what? Why, why is there paper in the frog? Guys, <laughs> what? You gotta make sure your plane's plugged in through the windows, obviously. Boom. Now it's modern. It's a modern plane for you. Your plane needs to be warm. To get those, those nice folds in, you, you, gotta, you gotta heat it up. I thought that was a push door. It, come on. Come on. I don't think you're supposed to microwave paper. Obviously that didn't work for heating up your paper. You gotta make, what? You gotta heat, you gotta, God. you gotta heat up the airplane. A warm airplane is essential to a good airplane. You need to accessorize your airplane. You gotta make that, you gotta make it look good, you know? Obviously, obviously you want it to work. Uh, obviously you want it to work. But if it doesn't look good, what's the point? That's my method in life, why did? Bam. It's a bow. The most essential part to an airplane is making sure it knows its place. And now let it sit for five minutes. And this is your final product. That's how you make a paper airplane. Thanks for watching. Well, that was a great tutorial. I made one myself. Well. I guess it's time to fly into your next story. It sure is, but please don't kill me with the airplane. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> students of the month, the students of the month this December are Angel Sargo and Joe Rogers. Angela is from t the town of Pepperell and is a senior in the cosmetology program. She is an honor roll student as well as a freshman mentor, helping incoming students accumulate to the Neshoba Tech environment. She is plan she's plans to continue her cosmetology field after graduation. Angela was nominated by her science instructor, Jeffrey Robinson, who wrote, Angela is a hardworking student who shows caring and loyalty towards her classmates. Joe is from the town of Lowell. He is a senior in engineering technology program. He is a high honor roll student and has complete, competed in Skills USA. He is in both National Honor Society, National Technical Honor Society as a junior, and is a member of the Tri-M Music Honor Society. 
He plans to attend Middlesex Community College, then transfer to U the University of Massachusetts Lowell to complete a degree in either archaeology engineering or marine engineering. Joe was nominated by his math instructor, Sam Harvey, who wrote, Joe maintains academic excels work after school and is involved in sports. He is a polite and hardworking student. Now, on to three-point lighting. <laughs> Hi, my name is Elsa Vig. I'm a senior in TV media, and I'm the original creator of Neshoba Shows You How. And today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do three-point lighting. So our first step is our first light, our key light. I'm going to take my lovely assistant here and I'm going to put the light at a 45 degree angle away from her and maybe about three feet away depending on how bright your light is. And I'm going to find a, a color that looks nice in her skin and I'm going to set that one. Our second light is going to be our fill light. It's going to add another dimension. So I'm also going to put this one at a 45 degree angle away from my model. And I'm gonna have it a little bit lower so it adds some like ups and downs in, in the face. And then our third, because frankly, she's looking a little bit flat, we're gonna add a backlight. And the backlight is used to help add that third dimension and kind of separate you from your backdrop. So that one is going to go either right behind you or to the side. Ours is slightly to the side so you don't get the stick in the back, but you can do either. And that light is going to be very high up, so it comes down below you. If not, the light will get into your camera, and it's just not going to look as good. So I'm Elsa Vig. I'm the senior in TV media, and I showed you how to do three-point lighting. I always love watching the show, but it shows you how, especially if it's about our shop. Yes, definitely gave me some bright ideas. I see what you did there. So uh, this ends our uh, VNN show today. I'm Jeremy. And I'm Cecilia Campbell, and thank you for watching.